Hello again from here um, for what's fast becoming a bit of a habit. Um, so I have been really looking forward to this Finds Live because um, it's, it's, something, it's about something that I actually collect. I don't collect a lot. I usually keep one or two pieces and give the rest away or I leave them there. But this is something that I collect almost obsessively. So I've got quite a lot of it. So I've been really looking forward to bringing everything together and talking to you about it. So we're going to talk about Bellamines or Bartmans, uh, Bartman jugs. And um, I'm going to start off by showing you a complete one. Here we go. Isn't it beautiful? So this is a uh, late 16th century um, Bellamine or Bartman jug. It wasn't found on the Thames foreshore. Um, this actually came from Germany. I think it was excavated while they were building um, a new school. And it ended up in Australia and a man contacted me through Facebook who was looking for a very early pipe. And I did a fabulous swap for a, um, a, an early, uh, a late 16th century pipe and I swapped it for this. So I've got a complete one but I've never found one on the foreshore. They're really hard to find on the foreshore. Um, they've come up very, very, very rarely. And what you usually find are bits, bits and pieces. So I've got loads and loads of shards um, from, uh, that I found on the foreshore. I can never resist bringing them back. So I've got them all spread out in front of me here on my, on my table. But before I start to uh, walk you through them, and it's actually the top drawer in my cabinet of curiosities. So it's my most important drawer, number one, um, and it's full. And so we're starting off at number one of my cabinet of river curiosities, and um, I will talk you through them all. But before I do, I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about these gorgeous things. Um, so these were, very popular in the uh, 16th and 17th century. They were mainly made in Germany and also in the Netherlands. They're made of stoneware, which is a very hard ceramic, and they're salt glazed. So you can see this lovely um, brown speckledy glaze that uh, looks almost like orange peel. And the way that they created this, they, they'd stack all the pots in the kiln and then they'd throw salt, handfuls of salt, into the kiln. And as it fired, it would, it would create this gorgeous speckledy glaze. Um, so these were, these, these were very common. They were shipped over to England in their thousands. Um, sometimes they contained a, a sort of sweet Rhinish wine. Um, sometimes they were completely empty. And uh, they were used, once they were empty, if they had something in them, in, in houses and taverns all over London. They were very, very popular. Um, and the thing that is, is, is most noticeable about them are, is this face. The beardy face. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that later when I'm showing you all my bearded faces that I found on the foreshore. And also this what's called a cartouche. And the cartouches are very often the coats of arms of the villages and towns where these were made or the merchants that commissioned them. Now these were brought over to London um, in ships up the Thames um, and um, as I say used in taverns and houses all over the place. And one of the reasons we find so much of them, if you go down to the foreshore, I can almost guarantee you'll find at least a little bit of, of, um, of, of Bellamine or Bartman, is because everyone used them. Now, um, there is a bit of an urban myth about these. Uh, in Germany, they were known as Bartman or bearded man jugs because of the beardy man. Um, in England, they became known as Bellamine jugs and they were called Bellamine jugs after a um, Cardinal Bellamini, who was staunchly anti-alcohol, very Catholic, at a time when the Protestants and Catholics weren't getting on with each other. And it's said that people would smash these jugs for the joy of seeing his face in pieces. And uh, people say that's why we find so many on the foreshore. Really, I think it's just that there were a lot of people drinking from them and dropping them in taverns, probably when they were drunk. Um, so uh, that's the story behind the, the, the beardy face. Um, in, in reality, the beardy face is probably the wild man, um, a little bit like the green man, the wild man of, of European folklore, who is a hairy being that lived in the forests. And, uh, and that's probably what these beardy faces are. Um, so yes, yeah, so as I say, I collect these obsessively. If I find them, I always bring them home. I bring home the tiniest little shards of them. And so I'm going to start by, um, showing you what I've got. So 
Forgive me, I'm gonna pick you up. I'm trying to turn you around. I'm not the best at technology. Hang on, here we go, here we go, right. Here we go, right, okay. So this is my drawer. Ignore my notes, ignore my glasses that I need now. Uh, this is my number one drawer. Here we go. I'll give you a quick scan over it. Number one drawer. I've got lots of bits in there. These are the bits that don't fit in number one drawer. So I've got quite a few, and we're gonna start at number one drawer. Here we go. So we're gonna start over here, and in this corner, we've got these beautiful faces. Can you see? These lovely faces. And it's like, these are faces from history, aren't they? You know, you can, you can look at them, they've all got character, they're all different. There's someone's legs, look. Another pair of legs, look. And I love the way they break, the way they, they fracture. Um, this one here, this one's got a date. This is 1594. And um, the, 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 the Bellamines appear in the Bankside chapter of my book. And I did a bit of research on that date, 1594, and it was actually the date that Comedy of Errors was first performed. And I found that just in front of the Globe Theatre, Shakespeare's Globe as it's now known, but where the Globe once stood in the 16th century. So that one's really special. And it's got this lovely blue cobalt glaze that they sometimes splashed onto the um, onto these jugs. Now. In later times, the, um, all these beautiful cartouches uh, became stylized and they became, um, they became stylized and they became more like flowers, these flowers here. Um, and you can see some writing here. And when you go up here, very often they had um, leaves. There's some oak leaves here and some more leaves here. And then we come to the faces, bits of faces. I've got lots of bits of faces, eyes and noses and beards and moustaches and mouths. And sometimes I can spend an evening putting together faces <laughs> just for the fun of it. Um, and then coming over to the broken bits of cartouches here. I don't know, some of these are, are from Amsterdam, they're from places in Belgium, places in Germany. Um, there's some beautiful pieces here, there's a particularly nice bit here. Um, we'll find it just there. That's nice. So I'm going to slow down. There's some hearts here. That's a nice bit. And you can see how intricate some of these beards are. Some of them are really plain. Some of them are just beautiful swirls and, 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 and shapes that they've created. I like this bit here. There's some lovely acorns there, or they might be thistles even. And I think there's even some, there's rather a busty lady here somewhere, but I, I can't find her right now. Anyway, movie, ah, that one, I like this one. There we go. She's rather lovely. Okay. okay, now moving over. Here we've got some complete cartouches. So you can see this was probably about the same size as my, my Bellamine here. It's a lovely cartouche. And then another one here. And here are, here are my chaps, here are my, here are, here are my boys. Here they are. This is the very first one I found. And I found this at Greenwich. And um, he, really, um, he really got me into mudlarking, actually. It's one of the first things that I found. And, and um, he's just, I just love his face. He's just got a really daft look on his face. And none of these faces are the same. They're all different. Like this one. He almost looks like a lion. He's got this sort of liony face. And a lovely, another sort of daft looking one here. 
Now, um, I've read that um, the, the earlier ones were a lot more um, better molded, a, a lot finer. Um, and as um, as they as as the years went on, they started to produce these the the faces, uh, make much much less effort, and the faces became very sort of pinched and ugly. Um, and so these are my ugly ones. <laughs> I don't know if they're, they're later because I'm sure that they did produce very cheap, um, quickly produced ones as well. Um, but when you look at this, this face here, he, he's quite an ugly bugger. Um, and there's quite a few here. I mean, look at this. This one looks nothing like the others. This is perhaps the ugliest one I've got. It's, it's also a different colour. Now, um, I say that most of these were produced in, in London. There were a small number of German potters producing um, <clears throat> Bellamy's in London uh, and the London ones were quite quite ugly and, and basic like this so this could be a London Bellamy rather than one that's been imported um, there's another really quite sad looking <laughs> looking chap um, but when you compare the quality of that to something like 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 this you can see the difference you know you can see how how different the quality is there um and uh, some of the beards i've got are just look at that look at the, the look at the decoration there and the beards it's just it's just beautiful and then these are the little bits that i haven't got room for and they're a little bit too small and and dare i say insignificant to include in my collection um I'll find a use for them somewhere at some point. Now, every single one of these is different. I haven't got one piece the same. Um, and, and, and there were many, many potteries making these. Um, they weren't all made by the same person. They were made by lots of different places, lots of villages, lots of towns made them. Um, and they all made them slightly differently. Uh, I'll just take you across here one more time, very slowly, so you can get your, feast your eye on these. They are beautiful. That one's a particularly lovely one. I had to glue that one back together again because it, it, it was broken in the mud, but I glued him back together again. Uh, take you slowly across here. One day I'm going to find a complete one. Um, if you go to Greenwich, if you go to the um, National Maritime Museum, they have a very special bellamine in there. And uh, they found it while they were digging up the, um, the Naval College there. There was a, a Tudor Palace there. And so they did quite a lot of excavations at one point. And they found this bellamine and inside it was corked. And inside they found a liquid. And inside the liquid, they found human hair with, with lice in it. They found nails, human nails. They found pins and they found nails. And it was a witch's bottle. Now, people have found witch's bottles on the foreshore. I, um, I think probably they were dug out from an old, um, the, the foundations of an old house and it, it were dumped into the river at some point. But um, these witch's bottles, people um, would put them together and bury them in their, in their doorway of their houses as a counter curse to witches. So they weren't actually a spell, they weren't anything malicious, they were designed to keep the evil spirits away. Um, and Greenwich College, they actually have one with the contents still. They can tell, they've tested the urine, they can tell the lady that produced it was a smoker. Um, I know that, the, that one has been found on the Thames and it had a felt heart inside that was pierced with, with pins. Now, um, I would love to find one of those. That would be really, really special. Um, so um, I'm just going to try and turn this around again. Hold on, bear with me. I'm back again. Okay, so that's my collection. I've got one thing to show you that I couldn't show you while I was holding on to the camera, and that's this. Um, it doesn't look that special, but it's really special because it's still got the cork in it, and the cork's dried out. And that, 
just knowing that somebody pushed that into their, oh, I don't know, 400 years ago, after they'd had a good drink, maybe sort of small beer, everybody drank beer back then, it was safer than, than, the, than the water, it was cheaper than wine, um, it wasn't that alcoholic, and it was, um, it was what everybody drank, from men, women, and children. Um, the, the fact that somebody shoved that back in there, chucked it in the river, or they dropped it in the tavern and then shoveled up the pieces and threw it in the river. There's something really special about that. Um, so yeah, so that's my, that's my collection of Bellarmines. Um, my uh, my go-to Bible for anything pottery is this. I don't know if that's, that's showing to you back to front because it does weird things, this inst Instagram thing. But it is, if these pots could talk by Ivan Noel Hume, and it's a fabulous book. It's got everything you need to know in it. Um, I managed to get mine cheap, second hand. It's quite expensive now, um, but it's a brilliant book, and Ivan Noel Hume writes beautifully. Uh, so I used that when I was writing my own book, and it, it, it's got so much information in it. Um, hello to everybody who's joined me from Canada and New York and Finland. You're coming at me from all over the world now, which is fabulous. Um, I'm going to be back again next week um, with some more finds from my um, cabinet of river curiosities. I haven't yet decided what I'm going to do. And I've also got some more really interesting people I'm going to be chatting to. Um, so that's coming out as well later this week. Um, so stay tuned. This will be available for 24 hours on Instagram and then it's going on to my YouTube, my new YouTube page. Um, stay following, stay safe everybody, um, keep your wits about you, You're, um, we are all in this together I suppose, uh, it's giving me a chance to go through all my stuff, so I will be sharing more with you, so stay tuned, good night.